In this lesson, we'll take a look at proving some trigonometric identities. And on the first page here, we'll list the identities that we're going to use. There are three Pythagorean identities. The one we're going to focus on is uh, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. The quotient identity is uh, tan x equals sine x over cos x. There's also one for cotan. Cotan x is cos x over sine x. The reciprocal identities are cos x equals 1 over sin x, secan x equals 1 over cos x, and cotan x equals 1 over tan x. These are the compound angle formulas that we derived in an earlier lesson, and we'll use some of them as well. Now, we won't use all of these trig identities in the uh, examples in this note, but those are the ones that we're going to focus on. And before we get into some examples, this is a definition of what an identity is. It is a mathematical statement that is true for every value that makes the statement defined or that's in the domain of the statement, uh, as, a, as opposed to an equation. An equation usually has a certain finite number of roots. For example, linear equations have one root. Quadratic equations have zero, one, or two roots. So an identity is something that you're not solving to find what x is or whatever the variable is. You're actually trying to show that uh, two different expressions are actually equivalent. So flipping over to the second page, we're asked to in example one prove that cos 2x equals cos squared x minus sine squared x. So this is an identity. We have two expressions, cos 2x on the left and cos squared x minus sine squared x on the right. And we're going to start with one of those and show it's equal to the other expression. Now, depending on, it's, it's often a good idea to take the larger expression and try to simplify it, but that's not always the case. We actually could do that, but in this case, we're actually going to start with the cos 2x because of the fact that it's a 2x and reduce that in a way so that there's only cosines or sines of just x and no longer a 2x here. And the identity that we're going to use is the compound angle identity for cosine and says cos x plus y equals cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. And what I'm going to do so that I don't have a 2x here anymore is I'm going to rewrite this as cos x plus x. There's the uh, 2x, x plus x. So I'm actually going to use this and the second variable instead of a y over here I'm going to put an x there, there, and there in the end. And so the next line will look like this. Instead of cos x, cos y, it'll be cos x, cos x, because the second variable is x as well. And on the end, after the subtraction sign, it won't be sine x, sine y, it'll be sine x, sine another x. And so this is cos x times cos x is actually cos squared x, and sine x times sine x is sine squared x, and that's what we want to show that cos 2x is equal to. We want to show it's equal to cos squared x minus sine squared x, and that's exactly what we have. So this is what is on the right side of the identity, and so we're finished. And so we would make a concluding statement stating, therefore, cos 2x is equal to cos squared x minus sine squared x. In example number two, we're asked to prove one of the co-function identities that sine pi over 2 minus x is the same as cos x. And so I'll start with the left side, the sine pi over 2 minus x, and that certainly obeys the, the, the uh, guideline that uh, this is the more complicated side. Obviously, cos x can't get much simpler. There's only one trig function there. Now, the, uh, the identity that I'm going to use is the sine x minus y one. It's equal to sine x cos y minus cos x sine y. And so the x here will be the pi over 2, and the y, the second variable, will be the x. So we'll put uh, a pi over 2 here and an x here. So that's why it's sine pi over 2 cos x. And on the end, again, this is pi over 2 right there. And the uh, x in the end, that'll be sine x on the very end. Now, I have part of the unit circle here just so we could quickly evaluate what sine pi over 2 and cos pi over 2 is. And so the rotation from 1, 0 up along the circle to pi over 2 is to here. So we're looking at this point. And remember, the x coordinate is the cosine of the angle, and the y coordinate is the sine of the angle. So that means that the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So making those substitutions, 
the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Again, that's the y coordinate. And the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And so we actually just have 1 times cos x. So that's cos x. And 0 times anything here is 0. So that actually just disappears in the end. And we're left with just it's equal to cos x, which is what we wanted to prove. So that is what's on the right side. And then we would state, therefore, the sine of pi over 2 minus x is equivalent to cos x. In example 3, we're asked to prove that cosecant 2x equals 1 half secant x cosecant x. And I'm going to start with the, although this seems to be the larger, more complicated side, I'm going to start with a cosecant 2x because there's a 2x here. And use identities to change it so there's no longer a 2x. So we'll start with the cosecant 2x, the left side. Again, write your left side, ls equals, that's the left side of the identity. Now, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So cosecant 2x would be equivalent to 1 over sine 2x. That's one of those reciprocal identities from the first page of the note. Now I need an identity for sine 2x, and I'm going to derive that sort of on a, in a secondary fashion note here from the uh, compound angle identity sine x plus y. And again, um, I'm going to put an, an x here in place of the y. So I'll have sine x plus x, which will be equivalent to sine 2x. So placing uh, an x in place of that y, then this actually is sine 2x. And so notice when I replace that y with an x and that y with the x, both of these are actually sine x cos x. And it doesn't matter whether I say cos x sine x or sine x cos x, it doesn't matter the order it's the same thing. So there's actually two sine x cos x's here. So now we have an identity for sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. And so that's how we get rid of the 2x here. So in place of the sine 2x, I'm going to substitute 2 sine x cos x. Now that, there's where the half came from. There's the 1 over 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down in the denominator. We have 2 times sine x times cos x. So actually, I'm actually going to write this as 1 half times 1 over sine x. So there's the 1 over sine x. And then I have 1 over cos x as well. In the numerator, there's only a 1 here. And you might say, well, that's the 1 right there. But you see, they have, this has to have a 1 in the numerator as well, as does the cos x, because 1 multiplied by that 1 multiplied by that 1 is still equal to that 1 in the line above. So there's still a 1 over sine x and 1 over cos x. Well, there's the half. And 1 over sine x, remember sine x and secant x are reciprocals. So that is equal to secant x. Or actually, that one's cosecant, sorry. 1 over cos x is the... Uh, reciprocal of secant. And so we can replace 1 over cos x with secant x. And it doesn't matter that the order is different. This reciprocal is actually the cosecant. And this reciprocal is actually the secant. And so it doesn't matter whether I say cosecant x, secant x here, or secant x, cosecant x. It is the same thing because it just multiplied for the same reason that 3 times 2 is the same as 2 times 3. Now we don't need to rewrite this in the same order. We can now just say this is equal to the right side expression. And so our identity is, has been proven. Cosecant 2x is equal to 1 half secant x cosecant x.